Daniel chapter 10. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, dated. I'm just trying to read a note here. This is a king that they could go back under. A thing was revealed unto Daniel. Now, Daniel is not writing this. He'll start reading, or he's writing in the third person, which is used a lot in the Bible. Whose name was called Belshazzar. Well, isn't that interesting? Cyrus is king in what was Babylon of Persia. And the God name of Babylon is still retained. Uh, in 1853, an inscription in Ur showed Belshazzar did reign. Well, ar archaeology is used as a tool to confirm what God has already said. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. It's been 2,000 years, more. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision, period. In those days, I, Daniel, somebody wrote verse 1 was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. You gotta wonder what happened to chapter 1 verse 12, the pulse. Remember, you wouldn't drink the king's wine? Uh, Luke told Paul to write Timothy, drink a little wine for thy stomach infirmity. You gotta realize in other countries, oh yeah, they drink wine. Yeah, because the water is bad. Now I don't know if it's bad at th this point in time, but wine's a staple in many countries because the water will make you sick. You don't want to drink Mexican water. It make you run for the border. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. He fasted. He didn't anoint himself with oil. And in the four and twentieth day of the first month, dated, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hidiko, the Tigris River. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. Fine linen is the righteousness of the saints, whose loins were girded with fine gold of euphab. His body also was like the barrel, it's not barrel like wood, and his face as the appearance of lightning, got to be Jesus Christ, as the appearance of lightning and his eyes as lamps of fire. That's the Lord Jesus Christ at the second advent. And his arms and his feet like the color to polished brass. And the voice of his words were like this voice of a multitude. Sounds like much people. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. Paul in Acts chapter 9. When he speaks to the Lord Jesus Christ, he has companions with him, but they... They trembled and ran off, and they said they heard thunder. They saw nothing. But a great quaking fell upon them, so that they fled to hide themselves. And that's exactly what Paul said happened to the companion of his. Therefore I was left alone, blown around me, Daniel, and saw this great vision. And there remained no strength in me. For my comeliness, and that's what his face looks like, your facial expression, was turned in me into corruption. You know, anybody who thinks they're going to come up to Jesus Christ and slap him high five and my man Jesus, 
That's not what they do in the Bible. They fall down and worship him. And they realize that they're a sinner. That they're none good. No, not one. And I retain no strength. Yet I heard, yet heard I the voice of his word. And when I heard the voice of his word, then was I in deep sleep on my face. And my face toward the ground. So he's on his knees with his face in the dirt. Ezekiel 128 and Acts chapter 9. Paul hit the deck. Behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees. So he's not on his knees. He's lying down. I think, and like I said, you can take this as personal. I think when we die or absent from the body, I don't think we're going to just walk up to Jesus and say, how you doing? I think we're either going to be on our face, lying down like Daniel is here, or at least on our knees. The first thing I think we're going to see when we see Jesus is going to be those holes in his feet. And as we look up to him, get permission to look up to him, we'll see his knees. And then the next thing we'll see is the holes in his hands reaching out for us. That's what I think. I have no Bible proof for that. But the Bible says when after his resurrection, they didn't say the disciples beheld him by his feet. Behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and upon the palms of my hands. So now he's down like a dog. Kind of humiliating. I'm on all fours. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, like John, the apostle, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Luke 24:45. And said unto me, Fear not. Who said that all the time? For from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God. So this is not God. You know, God is Jesus, and Jesus is God. I believe this is the three weeks that he, you know, he wanted to get right. Thy words were heard. You ever think of a prayer that you, you know, you pray to God, oh, God didn't hear me. They're heard. And I am come for thy words. Colossians 1.16. By the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me one and twenty days. Twenty-one days. That's the three weeks. That's seven times three. While Daniel is praying and fasting and not anointing himself, this person, the Lord Jesus Christ, or whoever it is, is sent from God. And you know what? That three weeks of time is because the prince of the kingdom of Persia became a hindrance. Now you know that this ain't the man of Persia. What man could stop any angel? What man could stop Jesus Christ? Ephesians 6, 12, Isaiah 24, 21, Ezekiel 28, 12, Matthew 18, 10. Remember when Satan was addressed through the king of Tyre? Satan withstood Daniel's messenger sent by God. Your prayers may be hindered because of Satan working. Well, Michael, it's a name. It's only two names of two two angels ever given: Michael and Gabriel. And they're not just angels. One of the chief 
Princess. Plural. Called an archangel. He has a male name. Came to help me. Now I don't know really if Michael can help the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't think Jesus Christ needs any help. Michael fought with Satan over the body of Moses. And all Michael could do is say, and the Lord rebuked thee. Genesis, I mean, excuse me, Revelation 12. Michael and his angels are going to fight Satan. All they can do is kick him out of heaven. There's a strong angel, angel that ties and binds Satan up. And God himself is the one that casts Satan into the lake of fire. Came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. So he's hindered to get into Daniel. Now I am come to make thee understand after the kings of Persia, after being hindered, what shall befall thy people, the Jews, in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days, and it is. Genesis 49.1, Isaiah 2.2, 2, Micah 4.1. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground. He's back down in the ground, looking down. And I became dumb, unable to speak like Ezekiel. Well, I'm going to tell God a thing of 14. Really? You really think so? Now, I believe... Again, I believe, and you don't have to take this, God's a holy and righteous judge. In every courtroom, you have the right to speak. I think God's going to allow every man the opportunity to speak up. I think they're going to have the opportunity to tell God what they think of God. and what I think God's going to do that. I believe, and I could be wrong, but you're going to do it only by the permission of God. And God will have to say something like, all right, what do you have to say? What is your side of the story? Something like that to that fact. One guy says, thou art our steer, man, and, you know, you reap where you not. One guy actually got to speak up. He didn't get too far, did he? Daniel is unable to speak. Ezekiel was unable to speak. Paul was unable to see. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake. Ezekiel had a burning coal. Or Jeremiah, one of them. He said, I'm an unclean man with unclean lips. And remember that they reached inside the cherubims and grabbed the coal and touched his lips. And said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the visions my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. He hasn't been eating. Don't think because you're a Christian, I'm going to fast. You're going to have the strength to do anything. If you're a truck driver, or you're involved in weightlifting as an occupation, you better limit how far you fast. If you got a medical condition like diabetes, you better watch how long you fast. Because guess what? Your strength goes. You get weak in fasting. I think God understands that if you got a medical condition or you got a job where you know you need strength, I think God understands if you do a 24 hour fast. Or try fasting on the weekends when you don't have to work. 
I think God understands if you have a medical condition and you need food. I mean, if you can fast, if all you can do is because of a, a condition that you can't control, if you can fast only an hour, and you do that hour, I think God would understand. I don't think he'd hold it against you. I mean, who put rules and regulations on a fast? For how can the servant of this Lord, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? Whew, that's a messed up verse, isn't it? I'm glad I'm taking English in college. I don't have to break that sentence down. The subject and the, and the uh, object. And the <laughs> For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? The servant is Daniel. <laughs> The Lord is this this person he's talking to. The last Lord, God, who sent the Lord, who's this? And as for me, straightway there remains no strength in me. Neither is there any breath left in me. His breath is gone. He's had the wind knocked out of him. Remember, Daniel is not under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He hasn't had a sacrifice since he's left Babylon. I mean, De uh, Jerusalem. He's in Babylon. There's no more temple. How is Daniel saved? <laughs> he can't bring a, a sin offering, can he? Then there came again, and touched me one like the appearance of a man. And he strengthened me. He said, O man greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee. Luke 24, 36, John 14, 27. Be strong. Yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, and said, Let my Lord speak. For thou hast strengthened me. Then he then said he, Knowest thou wherefore I've come unto thee? And no and, and now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. The battle ain't done. Daniel, I'm here only on a timeout. <laughs> Daniel, I'm here right now, and there's a battle going on, and we're in the halftime. I gotta go back, and when I am going forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. Imagine what Daniel's thinking right now. Just look what it says, verse thirteen. The prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me. Now he says, verse 20, I am going for the prince of Grecia shall come. Somebody does not want Daniel to get the message, do they? <coughs> Nothing stopped the apostle John from writing the book of Revelation. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. I'm going to show you exactly what's in the Bible. From the Bible. How's that? And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. So this guy is not Michael. I don't think this guy is Jesus Christ because I don't think Michael, I don't think Jesus Christ needs Michael's help. And whoever this person is. He's in the outer space where no man has gone before, battling princes over nations of this world, where the book of Revelation tells us that there are representations of the churches called stars, called angels. 
Ezekiel tells us that such a king of Tyre is a representation of Satan. Satan told Jesus, I can give whoever I want because I'm in charge of this earth right now. But evidently, these kings are under Satan's control. And they don't want Daniel. Their orders are to prevent this message to get into Daniel. So had Satan, you realize if the victory had gone to the lions, what we would not be reading today? How much of Daniel would be gone if Daniel became lion food? Who put Daniel in that lion's den? Satan. To stop what we're doing right now, and that didn't stop him. So now he's Satan's calling out his troops. Calling to muster. Here are the orders. Prevent Daniel from getting the revelation from God. And whoever God sends, I'm going to be very careful here, but whoever God sends, they are prevented from getting to Daniel by a certain period of time. Now we are in that realm of God versus Satan and Satan versus God and the angels versus the good angels, the good angels versus the Satan's angels. Then we've got Jesus Christ, we got Michael, we got Gabriel, and there's just a whole bunch of stuff going on right now above our heads. I have no idea. I have no idea. I read in the book of Revelation, when we get to heaven, at one point in time, we're actually going to see a an intergalactical war. And I don't mean Star Wars. I don't mean Dark Vader versus Skywalker on that. I mean Michael is going to stand up against Satan. The angels of God versus the angels of Satan. And we're going to watch Michael kick Satan's butt out of heaven. And the Bible says we're going to rejoice. Again, Michael is called down to go get Moses' body. Satan pops up and says, what are you doing? Getting Moses' body. You can't do that. Satan, the Lord rebuked thee. Michael does not have the power. I, let me say this reverently. Let me say, because I don't know what I'm saying. Okay? But Michael does not have the power to stop from Daniel from getting this message. Something's going on. Maybe it's Daniel in his sins. Maybe he has to confess. I don't have no idea what's going on here. But there's a power. Your prayers may be stopped or may be hindered because of Satan. Your prayers may be hindered because of sins in your life. But you got to realize in the realm of true life that we are blinded to, there is stuff going on right now that you have no idea what's going on. You may have physical attacks on your life where Satan was thinking you were to be dead and God got you out of them. I can name many in my life. Things that have been written about me, things that I have I observed personally, in a personal testimony. I should have been dead. There has been no rights how I should have survived. And then to say that Mike wasn't Michael or an angel came down and shut those lions' mouths. And yet Hebrew says entertains angels unawares. That there's a and listen, I'm not Matthew, I think it's Matthew speaks about that there are angels over children. Haven't you as a been a parent that something's just told you you better go in that other room? As that kid's about to stick the scissors in the light socket, or he's about to uh, what something. Don't tell me that's parent intuition. Because if it was parental parental intuition, you'd be keeping him busy all the time. Your, your kids would get in trouble. Daniel is a child of God. He's well beloved. He's great, and God is protecting him. 
And then one other thing I want to say about this battle with Satan. I'm trying to tell you to be careful because I sat under a pastor one time who, who's ruined. He called most money face. He's going to get to victory over Satan. That Even the Lord Jesus Christ, when he faced Satan three times on that mountain, you know how Jesus rebuked Satan? Not by, I'm Jesus Christ, I'm God, get out of here, Satan, when it's true with a water gun. He quoted the, the, the scripture, and Satan quoted the scripture right back. How do you like that one? We're in a realm right now, it's... I can't speak. I have no idea. I'll just tell you. There are God's angels. Michael is an archangel. Gabriel is a special class of angel. Satan has his angels. He has certain uh, rulership of the kingdoms of this earth that are represented in the Bible. And it may be not just because God has not heard your prayer. Your prayer may be being hindered. You know what? You know what we learned from this chapter? Daniel's beloved, right? He's well thought of by God, right? The closer you get to God, the harder or more hardship will be for your prayers to be answered. It's right there. You think Satan wants God to bless you and you turn around and glorify God for being blessed? You think God you think Satan enjoys that? I know God does. So we're gonna learn a lot of information in the next couple chapters. We've already learned a lot of information. What we learned already, maybe Daniel hasn't even written down yet. 